This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Mnow Biscuits. Opposition questions government on unpaid retirement benefits. Treasurer reveals recession in 2023 for key countries. And Governor Bird urges KPHL to be transparent. Good evening. You're watching National MTV News. I'm Rocky Iso. Thank you for joining us. Deputy Opposition Leader and Member for Kirin A Good Enough, Douglas Tomoriesa, has asked the government to come clear on the retirement benefits of public servants. He was responding to a statement presented by the Minister for Public Service, Joe Sungi, regarding the payment of retired public servants since 2019. During question time on Thursday's parliament sitting, member for Kiriwina Goodenough, Douglas Tomuriasa, has asked the Minister for Treasury and member for Kaviang, Ian Linstaki, to come clear on when all the public servants that have retired since 2019 will get their retirement benefits. He said, according to the Minister for Public Service and member for Nuku, Joe Sungi, funding has been made available. The government has reappropriated 200 million kina through the Department of Treasury to complete the retirement exercise in 20, 2022. And for this year's retirement exercise, a total of 640 public servants from 33 agencies at an estimated budget cost of 663. 63.5 million kina are being considered for retirement as the department continues to carry out the exercise. In summary, since 2019... Deputy Opposition Leader Tomuria Sa said money has been allocated for this purpose, yet some public servants are still waiting for their benefits. He asked the treasurer to reassure the house and the people that the fund allocated now for some 640 public servants must be delivered to them and must not be misused. Can the treasurer assure this house, the retirees, the nation and all public servants that the 63.5 million earmarked for this program will not just be another failed program where whereby these funds are sent to the de departments and are redirected or diverted to other programs and the retirees are left waiting in vain and stranded. In response, Treasurer Ian Linkstaki said the government stands committed in making sure public servants get their benefits. He said the Marape government has taken steps to address this since taking office in 2019 and will continue to do so with the new plans like trust funds to be established. Um, and I note your suggestion, your hint that perhaps we could put that into a trust fund. Uh, and because there's some merit in it, I'm happy to take that up with the Minister for Finance, who um, is empowered under the Act to establish uh, some trust accounts. Tomoriasa said currently public servants who are still waiting for their retirement funds are mainly from the police, defense force and correctional service departments. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. Minister for Treasury Ian Lin Staki presented an economy update yesterday during parliament sitting. This was the Treasury's second economic report since his last report of the supplementary budget. The Treasurer described the global economy as gloomy and more uncertain. It was highlighted in the report yesterday on the floor of Parliament that key countries are likely to head into recession in 2023. During his economic update report on PNG's economy yesterday during Parliament sitting, the Treasurer explained that the global economic outlook has become much worse over the last two months. These global economic changes are beyond PNG's control, as alluded to by Treasurer Ian Linkstaki. The international changes are well beyond the control of a country such as ours, where our economy 
accounts for just 0.03% or three ten thousandths of the world economy. Many now expect major economies will move back into a global recession next year. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, cited in its latest report that the three largest economies of U.S., Europe and China will continue to stall. Minister Link Starkey said for many people, 2023 will feel like a recession. According to IMF's latest report, the worst is yet to come. Treasurer Link Stuckey highlighted three main reasons for the current drastic changes in the global economy. The first is ongoing supply chain shortages stemming from COVID-19, especially from the continuing lockdowns in China. The second is the ongoing and troubling Ukraine. Russian war. The third economic threat is global inflation. Central banks globally are rapidly increasing interest rates. Furthermore, increases are considered likely until U.S. prices start falling in response to the global economy slowing. Treasurer Link Stuckey explained further. This has significant implications for PNG. First, our export markets will be affected. There will be less opportunities for our coffee, our cocoa in U.S. markets. Second, our international interest costs will increase, putting some pressures on our budget. And third, an economic slowdown will put downward pressure on oil prices. The Treasury Minister cited that while a fall in oil prices is good for PNG families, it also means less resource revenues for the 2023 budget. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. Students attending primary, high and secondary schools throughout the country have been urged to refrain from social outings that may disrupt their education. As grade 10 national examinations ended today, over 30,000 grade 12 students in the country will sit for the exams commencing Monday next week. The following week will see over 120,000 grade 8 students sit for the national exams. Education Secretary Dr. Uke Kombra is encouraging students to be productive citizens and not just to be involved in meaningless activities. Ultimately, upon the students themselves, uh, that they have to be self-disciplined up to the last minute. And but their students themselves, they get into peer groups and they uh, do things that are not acceptable. And they themselves will be responsible for the actions that they to take. So I would urge that every student should be responsible. Um, don't let a last-minute five-minute enjoyment or one-hour enjoyment to destroy your complete future. Uh, you have worked hard and you complete your examinations. You get the results and then you can always uh, have a celebration with your family or so on in an orderly manner, a lawful manner. The Governor for East Sipic Province, Alan Bird, has asked the Minister responsible for state enterprises, William Duma, to come clear on Kumu Petroleum Holdings' stand on buying shares in Santos Limited. Governor Bird said as KPHL is PNG owned, it must always come clear to the House and the people on how it conducts its businesses as tax rather, as tax pay rather, as taxpayers have paid a significant amount of money for the UBS loan inquiry and on how shares have been purchased for the Papua LNG. Governor Byrd said the Union Bank of Switzerland Loan Report, or UBS Report, was presented on the floor of Parliament and shows that the taxpayers were conned into paying for the shares that oil surge took out of the Papua LNG and the country paid over a billion dollars for that. He said now that PNG's 100% owned company, Kumul Petroleum Holdings, intends to purchase another 5% of the Papua LNG for another $5 billion is a question that needs answers. Does 
the left hand of government, which is KPHL, understand what the right hand of government, which is this House, has done by spending a significant amount of taxpayers' money on a very public inquiry. Do they understand that? Do they understand that they are part of the same government? Because the people of Papua New Guinea own this entity 100%. Minister responsible for state enterprises and member for Hagen, William Duma, in responding to Governor Bird's question, said the arrangements made to purchase the 5% equity of Santos is for the LNG project and not equity in the company Santos, and there is a difference in that. Duma said Santos is a privately owned company and can offer the same shares to other partners in the current Papua LNG project. And there is nothing preventing that company from doing that. So because of uh, the representations that were made by our leaders, including the governor for Southern Islands as well as our prime minister, Santos, although it had no legal obligation whatsoever, agreed to allow our nationally-owned company, nationally -owned company an opportunity to acquire additional equity in the LNG project. He said KPHL understands the implications of the UBS loan inquiry as these are commercial arrangements between KPHL and a company that is owned by the public and registered in another country. In terms of Governor Byrd's other questions on state entity purchasing stolen property, Minister Duma said the government is yet to set up a team which can decide whether to implement the findings on the inquiry or not. It is an arguable issue. It is not for me to uh, discuss this in this parliament, but uh, it is a matter that remains for this parliament to deal with at the later stage. Minister Duma further said Kumul Petroleum Holdings is required by law to present its investment strategy annually and continues to deliver to the nation. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. Prime Minister James Marapu says plans are currently underway to have a bilateral connection with Israel in the coming years. He said this after being questioned during the parliament sitting in Port Moresby today in regards to having Israel establish their embassy in PNG. Uh, with due respect, uh, to Moravi the Governor Luta Wenge, in a question asked, without notice, has asked the Prime Minister whether PNG has a bilateral connection with Israel or not, and that Israel embassy to be established in the country. Prime Minister, I have specifically asked you whether you could ask the Prime Minister of Israel and his government team to establish our embassy in Jerusalem. That's one. And second, I specifically ask you whether you could ask the Prime Minister of Israel to establish Israeli embassy in Papua New Guinea. You haven't answered those questions yet. In response, Prime Minister James Marape says Papua New Guinea is looking forward to have a bilateral connection in the very near future. Le establish a meeting with the leader to leader in this issue of the embassy in uh, Jerusalem or Israel and the embassy of Papua New Guinea. The Prime Minister further highlighted that Israel ranks high among the world's economies in terms of its technological status and the PNG government looks forward to working together with them in the future to help develop this nation. Uh, uh, Prime Minister, my government believe in, my government problem make him. Hopefully sometimes next year. Uh, if time is in order, me visit him all past them. Now, uh, about visiting me plan, I'll this like embassy in Jerusalem, now uh, embassy long Port Mosby, but part of this like bilateral discussion. Other important issues like lack of health services, education and roads in the country were also discussed on the floor of parliament and leaders of its districts and provinces in the country were being encouraged to work together for the betterment of their people and the country as a whole. Parliament will reconvene on the 22nd of November this year. Jim John, National MTV News. Delegates from mining and petroleum projects around Papua New Guinea, including government agencies, landowner companies and community-based organizations, were in Port Moresby for the two-day 2022 Community Affairs and Business Development Workshop organized by the PNG Chamber of Mines and Petroleum at the Hilton Hotel. 
The last day of the workshop was held today and during session six of sustainable in initiatives, former politician and Ramon Nico country manager Tommy Tomsko spoke on the dual responsibility the government and Ramon Nico have towards traditional landowners and landowner groups. Have. Uh, the annual workshop provides an inclusive platform for the resource industry, government, landowner companies and associations and community-based organizations to discuss initiatives, challenges and share ideas on community affairs best practices. This year the theme was PNG Resources, securing the next wave of responsible investment. During session six today, former politician and now country manager for Ramu Nico, Tommy Tomsko, shared the role of Ramu Nico and the role it plays in sustainable initiatives as a responsible corporate organization. We are committed to protect the environment and mitigate the effects of the climate change and also on the environment. The Ramon Nickel operates under a strict environment management plan approved by SEPA and consistent with the environment permit conditions. Mr. Tomskall emphasized that when it comes to sustainable initiatives, it is the responsibility of not only the mining companies, but the government as well. The government creates hostile investment conditions. You will, of course, get rogue investors coming into this country. Cutting short, we all know this biblical phrase, you will reap what you sow, so don't come after you will report you so. Also in attendance was Kumu Petroleum Holdings Limited Board Director, Mr. Paul Nera, who has over 40 years of extensive experience working in the petroleum sector, the mining sector, manufacturing industry and commercial business since the 1970s. Mr. Nera spoke on the importance of building human resources and capacity, as this is also sustainable for the future of PNG. Mining, uh uh, like uh, I keep reminding of people about Bougainville copper mine, I think uh, the sustainability of the future is about the human beings, the citizens of this country. That is very important. So in any of our discussions, sustainability means how do our people sustain themselves after the uh, closure of the mines. The workshop ended today with presentations including updates from Wafi Gopu, K92 Mine, Hidden Valley Mine and reflections and closing from Richard Kassman, the Senior Vice President of the PNG Chamber of Mines and Petroleum. National MTV News continues after the break with more national stories. You're watching National MTV News. We continue with more national stories. And the Minister Responsible for Environment, Conservation and Climate Change, Simon Kilepa, has outlined his plans to both environmental agencies, the Conservation Environmental Protection Authority and the Climate Change Development Authority in moving both agencies forward in working with relevant stakeholders in mining, petroleum, agriculture, forestry and fisheries to address natural resource challenges in the non-renewable sector. Since his appointment as Minister for Environment, Conservation and Climate Change, Simon Kilepa has been looking at ways in moving both environmental agencies forward. Kilepa highlighted two expected outcomes. More specifically, the Prime Minister expects SEPA and CCD to work with relevant stakeholders in mining, petroleum, agriculture, forestry and free service to address new services challenges in non-renewable sector. The two expected, out, expected outcome are one, development of our vast resources in a sustainable way to enhance the growth of our economy. Number two, reform our resources laws in order to provide opportunities for resource owners and stakeholders. To achieve the two outcomes, Minister Kilepa spoke of both SEPA and CCDA on how they can achieve this. SEPA and CCDA are uniquely placed in a position to achieve these outcomes through a coordinated delivery of your mandated policy, legislation and administrative responsibilities. Together as a team, these goals are achievable through effective planning, coordination, 
control and cooperation. All staff of both authorities are to cooperate and provide support to the senior management and the senior management to support the managing directors and myself as the minister responsible. In pursuing and achieving these development agendas, Minister Kilepa intends to also empower and strengthen efforts of CCDA and CEPA staff with new initiatives. In pursuing and achieving these development agendas, I intend to also empower and strengthen efforts of CCDA and CEPA with these new initiatives in my term in the office and starting and establishing the initial process within the first year of my appointment. The new initiatives are establishing a staff housing scheme, permanent office space to accommodate both agencies, moving SIPA and CCDA out to the provinces, districts and LLGs, and a strong media and communication strategy. With these four initiatives, the Minister responsible for Environment, Conservation and Climate Change intends to move the agenda of climate change forward. After much preparation and consultation with key stakeholders, YWAM Medical Ships began operating the YWAM Dental Semi-Trailer in Port Moresby this week, starting with a pilot program at Cervese Moria Elementary and Primary School. Over 120 students underwent oral health screening and more than 300 students received oral health education. Students who required further attention received treatment inside the dental trailer at the school. 22 volunteers participated in this pilot program, including two dentists, one dental therapist, and four dental assistants from both Australia and PNG. Over 125 dental procedures, including restorations and extractions, were provided. YWAM has been conducting mobile dental clinics in PNG for over 10 years through the medical sheep and land-based teams, with the majority of services being offered in rural areas. During this time, nearly 44,000 dental treatments have been provided in collaboration with provincial health authorities, local dentists and health workers. The Chief Executive Officer for NCD Provincial Health Authority, Dr. Steven Yeni, stressed that dental services are a significant need in NCD. He said this dental trailer program aligns with their current plan to expand these services and they look forward to working with YM to maximize the benefits of the program to the communities in NCD. This trailer is one of its first uh, of its kind in NCD, donated particularly to look at addressing the oral health issues for both children and adults. And NCDPHA is very pleased to be a partner with YWAM in signing a MOU last year to be able to strengthen the, the dental services within NCD. Uh, there is a huge demand in the oral and hygiene care service in NCD. So we were looking at capacity to be able to build in terms of getting partners to help us provide this similar uh, uh, service in NCD. We don't have uh, capacity at the moment uh, NCDPHA is currently as an existing MOU with UPNG. We have dental doctors there doing providing oral health services at uh, UPNG, and this facility is a fully fitted, a, uh, you know, facility with you know dental chest equipments, biomedical setup, inbuilt uh, power system to be able to provide all the different oral care. One of the YM Medical Ships volunteer from Wabukori, Venao Aiga, said that it was a joy to start work with the YM Dental Trailer and it has been eye-opening for her to see the need in a greater way in a community. It's been exciting because this is our very first program that we are running today and we did a lot of um, checkups and screening with the children and we did a lot of education on oral and um, nutrition. And um, this is very special uh, for me because I've been here uh, with the school when I was young and coming back and being part of this program and services, um, it's very, very blessing to see uh, these services reach my people and see so many uh, parents being filled with happy and joy. The YM Dental Trailer's arrival and pilot has been supported by a range of companies, including Henry Sane, Octady Mining, Agility Logistics, Mills Dental Care and Ella Motors. Estagane, National MTV News. The Global Hand Washing Day was celebrated today at the Living Light Academy Hall in Port Moresby with the theme, 
Unite for Universal Hand Hygiene. The UNICEF Deputy Representative Programs, Vikar Singh, said the day is celebrated to do awareness to the government, donors, businesses, institutions, researchers and advocates to unite in action to achieve the goal of hand hygiene for all. The five participating schools for today's celebration were the project schools under the education in emergencies response and recovery project phase funded by the Australian DFAT and implemented by UNICEF through implementing partners Anis Foundation Inc., World Vision and Care International in PNG. Global Hand Washing Day is a global advocacy day dedicated to increasing awareness about the importance of hand hygiene and triggering lasting change for the policy level to community-driven action. The WASH Director for Department of Education, Avea Avaroa, said this is part of them observing the calendar events. For this event, uh, Global Hand Washing Day, we are privileged that we have partners coming in and we are uh, for NCD, we are, we are now uh, observing it in this particular school, the Lighthouse uh, private school, but also in other settings, schools, classrooms, we, we know that teachers and schools and students are also, also observing. The UNICEF representative stated that hand hygiene can help reduce transmission of a range of disease. Just by hand washing, we can reduce the incidence of diarrheal diseases by 30%. And we can reduce the acute respiratory infections by 20%. Hand washing can also um, uh, uh, help in reducing the spread of uh, uh, other pathogens like uh, cholera and COVID-19. So that is why it's very important that all of us get united and we uh, spread awareness around the um, uh, hand washing importance. The Australian High Commission's second secretary, Chris Graham, said they realized the need of hand hygiene since the COVID-19 outbreak and started to support the schools with hand washing facilities across PNG. So hand washing was an important step in trying to keep the infection at bay. So we're very pleased to support the National Department of Education and work with our partners UNICEF and downstream partners to be able to provide uh, hand washing facilities and other support to schools. We're putting in hand washing facilities in around 500 schools across PNG. Estagane, National MTV News. And now taking a look at the NASFAN market report. The keynote closed unchanged at 0 0.2840 US dollars in the interbank market this morning. At Bank South Pacific, your Kino was buying 0 0.2765 US dollars. 0.4367 Australian dollars, 0.2761 Euro, and 40.37 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed lower, cocoa closed higher, copper closed lower, palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading lower, and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the A6200 is trading higher, and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues with more national stories after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. We continue with more national stories and a non-governmental organisation in Ley is calling on business houses, government departments and kind-hearted individuals to support its rehabilitation programme. Barnes Discharge Rehabilitation Services helps prisoners who have been discharged from Buimor Correctional Institute find a new beginning in their respective communities. Founder and Director of Barnish Discharge Rehabilitation Service, Mice and Mice, said they have been in operation for six years now. Since the inception, they have helped a lot of prisoners. However, in recent times, the number of prisoners they've helped is gradually decreasing due to funding support. 
DBRS registers discharged prisoners and provides basic education and skills knowledge to them before sending them out with small startup capital to start them off in their respective communities. DBRS director Mai Sen Mai, who was also a discharged prisoner himself, explained that with the support of partners, they have successfully rehabilitated discharged prisoners with needed support and skills. Currently, Panamax Pacific Limited, Lay City Authority, and the Catholic Diocese in Lay have been supportive towards the DBRS. So far, DBRS has rehabilitated 165 discharged prisoners. The rehabilitation institution now faces a huge challenge of keeping the center operational. The rehabilitation center is appealing to business houses, government departments and individuals to support in cash or kind towards the rehabilitation of discharged prisoners to be respected citizens back in their respective communities. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. The casket of the late Inga Provincial Administrator Dr. Samson Amian has arrived at Kagamuga Airport in Mount Hagen this morning. Accompanying the casket of the late Dr. Samson Amian was Inga Governor Sir Peter Epotas and immediate family members of the late Dr. Amian. The casket of the late Anga Provincial Administrator, Dr. Samson Amian, was welcomed by the Anga Provincial Administration, other departments, and the security forces at Kagamuga Airport. The arrival was around 10 a.m. today. The casket is being carried by the security force members. Accompanying the late Dr. Amian was Governor Sir Peter Ipetas and the provincial administration and departments, including immediate families. As per the official funeral program, casket departed for Wabeg and was received at the Ipetas Center. Later will be laid at the funeral home. The late Dr. Amian was the longest serving provincial administrator of the province and has contributed to the development of Enga province. In an interview with Sir Peter Ipotas earlier this week in Port Mosby, he has commended the contribution of provincial building and stewardship of the late Dr. Amian. We went to school together uh, at the primary school level and back at the high school level. And so, uh, you know, he's a very, very close friend of mine. And... Uh, you know, it's very, very sad to see him go. Grace Papiali, National, MTV News. The immediate family members of Constable Bevan Suai, who allegedly shot a young man in his late 20s, have finally made peace with the young man's family and the whole community at Creer Compound in Wewak. In a peace mediation ceremony conducted by the East Sipic Royal Constabulary's Crime and Investigations Division, the immediate family of First Constable Bev and Suai presented two pigs, 20,000 kina in cash, and food rations to late Neo Sauba's family. The father of the deceased accepted the peace offerings given by Constable Suai's family and thanked them for being considerate towards his loss. First Constable Suai's father said the law will deal with his son legally. However, he was obliged to do customary obligations to clear the atmosphere for his family and the people of Yaben village in Turubu LLG to freely move in and out of town without fear of being attacked. Constable Suai is currently being detained at Boram Correctional Institute awaiting his court hearing. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. National MTV News continues with True Kai Sports after these short messages. True Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. We begin with the Rugby League World Cup and it's finally here. 
Only one day remaining to this year's Rugby League World Cup, Papua New Guinea will be represented amongst 15 other nations by its national men's and women's teams, the Santos PNG Orchids and the PNG Kumuls. Both teams, who are currently in England ahead of the Rugby League World Cup, will play their respective matches in their respective pools. The Rugby League World Cup, after being postponed to this year 2022, will feature 16 participating teams and is finally set to kick off in the next 24 hours. The Rugby League World Cup will be starting tomorrow, the 15th of October to the 19th of November 2022. As one of the biggest Rugby League World Cup tournament due to COVID-19, it was deferred from 2021 to 2022 and will be hosted by England. In Pool A, England will take on France, while Greece takes on Samoa. In Pool B, Australia will take on Fiji and Italy to take on Scotland. In Pool C, Ireland will take on Jamaica and Lebanon to take on New Zealand. And in Pool D, Papua New Guinea will take on Cook Islands and Tonga will take on Wales. The International Rugby League Tournament will feature both the men's and the women's competition. MTV will telecast the Rugby League World Cup 2022 in England live and exclusive as of tomorrow, the 15th of October. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break with more sports stories. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. You're watching Trukai Sports. To boxing and Northern Proper Values today sponsored Team Raka with three return airline tickets to Manila, Philippines where professional fighter Junior Kauko Raka will travel with his trainers next week. Team Raka, upon receiving the ticket, said the struggle of securing sponsorship from professional boxer like Junior Raka has been very difficult, but appreciated the support from Northern Proper Valuers. Team Raka is excited to be given the opportunity to participate in this year's international bout in Philippines after receiving three airline tickets from Norton Property Valuers in Port Mosby today. After continuous training in Port Mosby, Raka, who is finally ready to attend his first international bout in Manila, Philippines, thanked the sponsors for coming to his aid and making it possible for Team Raka, who can now happily leave for Manila come Monday next week. North End Property Valuers, after hearing Raka's story and seeing what he does in his community, decided that it was only fitting that they step in and support the young Papua New Guinean who is not only passionate about the sport of boxing, but who proudly steps into the ring to represent his country. Team Raka, under the presence of the chairman, were present to receive the tickets from a rep from Northern Property Valuers. Accommodation sponsor Rapopo Resort was also present, where merchandises were donated to Team Raka. Raka will leave the country on Monday with his trainers bound for Manila, Philippines and will fight in the featherweight division against his opponent, Mark John, for the Asian title championship. Godwin Eki, Trukai Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports. The weather report is next. Stay with us for all the details. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Southern region, Port Moresby, partly cloudy. And for Pondera, cloudy and rain. Mamasa region, lay showers and Vanimo fine. Nigni Island region, Loringau mostly fine and Buka mostly fine. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen cloudy and rain and Wabag showers and fog. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Friday, the 14th of October, 2022. From all of us here, have a safe weekend, pleasant viewing, and bye for now.
This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.